60 years a priest. I was ordained in, at uh, Holy Family uh, Catholic Cathedral in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1954, May the 1st. Oh, this is the 40th year. I was ordained in 1974, back in India. It did not happen on a fine morning, you know. It was slowly, I would say, developing. Our whole life kind of revolved around those two things, our, our business and our, our church. It's like something that we cook, you know. We, we cannot say that at that particular time it is cooked, you know. It slowly, slowly warmed up and uh, is growing, you know. I fell in love with a pretty young girl from Kansas City and then I had to make up my mind whether to check out this priesthood business or, or let it go. That's what I did. I checked it out and kept going. I would not do it for the same reason today, not that I don't love the church, but uh, I only realized that uh, serving God came, came later <laughs> in terms of my perspective. I was an Air Force chaplain, got 20 years in. I was transferred to New Jersey. At the same time, I worked for the Sigro Malabar Diocese, but the weather was too much for me. So I asked for a transfer, and uh, my bishop transferred me to Oklahoma. But when I came here, it was almost as worse as what happened in New Jersey. <laughs> so, I was given the coldest welcome when I came here this year, you know. <laughs> the Roma Labar, it started in uh, India. We believe that uh, St. Thomas, the Apostle, uh, started that church and is spreading all over the world now. And in America, we started in uh, 2001. And the faith is the same, but the expression is different. Uh, this is a rather small community, you know. So I don't think that uh, this community is growing, is not growing rapidly as it is taking place in other states, you know. Still they have their own church, their own uh, uh, parish. The Oklahoma priests, the Oklahoma diocese was very uh, advanced in their thinking. So we were thinking about some of the things, concerns of Vatican II before we had Vatican II. What we focused on in family life in those days were uh, troubled marriages. We need married couples to help married couples. I did spend about oh, 10 or 15 years trying to develop greater skills in, in things like conflict management, communication. Uh, I really feel that that's, the, that's where the problem is. Uh, I mean, the, the skills needed to have a good, healthy, deep, loving marriage is couples need help because really they don't have those skills. The more we interact with the people, uh, the more I realize the need they have to lead them, enlighten them, teach them. Back in India, we are more than a spiritual leader. Even. We have to get involved into all the struggles of people know, financial, uh, psychological, social, political. We priests are there. In my own way, I could assist them, you know, as people and as individuals, as family, you know. That is the satisfaction I get, you know. I don't know how people look at me, you know. And I feel that satisfaction, I get it. Many people, I think, who are Catholic are not realizing what, what they have, because I think they're just losing something that's very precious. We have great parishes, but I still, still think there's an awful lot of people that are drifting away, and I don't think we really know, figured out why that's so. I think there's a, a great loss of, of, uh, of faith or 
of enthusiasm for the church. I don't see us are preaching five, 10 minutes, 20 minutes a week. Uh, it's, it's just not going to get it done. Catholic Church is, I would say, far away from the people, from the grassroots level. You know. The priests in America have to go down to the earth and, uh, and uh, try to build up personal relationship with the people. That personal relationship is not something I sense a lot of people have. One of the great evils that I think of the church is when we have power, we have prestige, or we have control. Uh, that's where we lose the faith. Back in India, they can come to the priest at any time, even at midnight. It is their right, they think, as going to their own father, no? It's more than just serving the church. If I have a need to go to my father, he won't say, don't come after eight o'clock, don't come after nine o'clock, you know. If he loves, if I trust him, I can knock at his door at any time. The more I think about my priesthood, you know, more blessings, you know, many things I could do. Uh, it's not because of my ability or anything that, you know. There is a feeling that God is walking with you, you know. I must say I had a great, uh, a great assignments. I had great opportunities. Uh, there were marvelous times to be at church, in the church. Great gratitude for all the opportunities that the leadership of the church has offered me to, to serve the way that I really pushed, as I saw my abilities to serve. I've been allowed to do that, and I'm really grateful. There are ups and downs. There are uh, both uh, in India as well as here, everywhere. You know. Priesthood, it properly understood is still relevant and tomorrow also it will be relevant I would say. I think gradually I'm coming coming to the appreciation that God uh, cares about me and loves me. I'm coming to that appreciation and therefore uh, looking forward to a few more years. And I pray that Make me an instrument so that I can serve uh, more people, you know, as you want. Growing close to God is what we're called to do and be. We will realize that and, and dedicate our energies and our time to that. It's a beautiful life. It's, it's the life that God called us to be and to do. I'm kind of looking forward to what's to come. <laughs>